All right, guys, as requested, here is a walkthrough of my movie room. So, got a little theater sign here. Got that at Hobby Lobby for like $20. And you can, you know, see it from downstairs. So it just kind of says, hey, here's the movie room. And you open the door. And these lights or these motion uh, light boxes are actually on a motion sensor. I built these boxes for about mm, maybe 80 bucks a piece. These are just snap frame posters, poster boxes. Let's see if I can get it open there. There we go. Got them from, uh, I think it's snapframes.com. You can swap the posters out in just a few seconds. They're pretty cool. You just basically build a box, line it with aluminum tape, put some LED strips in there, and I mean, they're real easy to build. So, got some little lights on a dimmer up there. And the floor is actually on a ramp. It ramps up 12 inches from where I'm standing right now. I'm seeing this side over here. I was I had plans of building like a little snack bar right there. Kind of making it look really cool, give a little extra theater feel, but just never got around to it. And this is actually where I do all my little filming, still kind of messy. I just kind of leave it there. I don't have to pick it up. So, a little step right here, it steps down. Excuse the mess, this is where we keep all of our blankets. So, so you can see the rack and everything to the right. It's basically a walk-in closet because I like to be able to get to the back of the rack. So I've just got my gear and stuff for filming and measuring, just assorted miscellaneous stuff. Now this is not the best uh, cable tying back here. It's kind of messy. And that right there is the amp I use for my uh, six uh, base shakers in my seats. Some Dayton BST1s. Love them, have way more output than I need. Here's the back of my iNuke NU4 6000. And the back of my Emotiva A700. Again, you've seen from my previous video, uh, videos, I use very little power. So that's way more power than I actually need. The back of my Marantz 7009. And there's the mini DSP 2x4 HD. I've got it Velcroed down so it can't move. And here you see an outlet. The right side of that outlet is on a separate 20 amp breaker than the left side. So I have two runs. That way I could feed all my amps. You know, they're plugged directly into the wall there. I could feed them on their own breaker. And, you know, it's just, it's always a good way to go. Now my projector is on another circuit. It's just on a 15 amp circuit that feeds the lighting. You know, it's just a projector, which is basically a light. kind of see the ramp right there the way it ramps up and walks right onto the main row it's got a little arch in it but. okay and about the little dvd case next to it we don't really have a lot of dvds and games and stuff we watch a lot of uh, online streaming so from the front in u4 6000 blacked it out and did the fan mod very easy to do. And the A700. Again, way more power than I have. I know some people have a, a negative uh, vibe towards Emotiva. I've had the XPA5 in my last home theater. I mean, I think they're great amps for the money. I've had much more pow powerful amps in here. And like I said, it does just fine. I can't tell a difference. I don't need much power. And my old... Uh, 7009 Marantz. The house is for sale, so it'll be going with the house. All this will be going with the house, except for the Xboxes. All right, so let's head into the movie room. And here we have four chairs. These are Seatcraft Sonomas. You got three in the front, four in the back with a love seat configuration in the middle. 
I love these seats. I know some people are kind of negative towards, you know, online seating. These are not super expensive. Of course, they're not cheap by any means either. But uh, I think I paid 4200 Yeah, 4200 for all of them. But, I mean, this is my seat right here. It's still, I mean, basically like the day I got it. And this seat right here rarely gets sat in. You can't tell the difference. I mean, I've had these seats for four or five years now. They still look like the day I got them. So you say what you will about seats that don't cost, you know, $1,500 each. I've had no problems out of these at all. I love them. But these seats have not had an easy life, even though they still look pristine like the day I bought them. We've had several parties. I have a 19-year-old, and, you know, for the last four years, she has had this room piled. I mean, there's been 30 people in this room before, and somehow the room has survived. Of course, I've had to make several threats along the way, but it's still here. All right, as for speakers, every one of these corners right here, there's a sub hidden. There's a sub hidden right there. And uh, you see if I push right here, there's acoustic material behind that, but here's, there's a sub back there. It's a six foot tall sub. Even down here, see that's fabric. But it blends right in. You can't tell where the fabric is and where the wall is. So they're completely hidden. There's actually a window behind that panel back there. And there's another sub right there. And like I said before, the floor steps up 12 inches as you walk in. So when you step down here, it's actually a 16 inch drop. And I designed this room, designed the house using uh, Chief Architect. I think we paid 60 bucks for the program. So I designed the whole house and this room, gave it to the, uh, you know, these days you have to have somebody do the drawings for you. So we just gave him the file. He happened to use Chief Ar Architect, and he basically loaded it into his computer, and we had to pay him full price. I wasn't too happy about that, but so we designed the, designed the room. So it steps down 16 inches. So it's got a nice big step down, which I like it. It's almost like a pit down here. And the ceiling is nine foot on the back, you know, the back riser back there, but on the front, it's 10 foot four. So the ceiling's a pretty good ways up there. And we've got, as far as surrounds, let's see these columns right here. There's a surround in that column, one in that one, one in that one, one in that one. So every row has its own set of surrounds are wired in parallel. So the receiver sees a four ohm load for the surrounds. My rears are actually right there. You can see when I push on it right there. Couldn't put them in the columns because the columns weren't at the right angle. So they have to go where they have to go. And the screen is 165 inch DIY Seymour XD. Now the little lines you see on it, that's actually the lamps. Lamps are incandescent and they kind of have like a little weird effect. There's no wrinkles in the screen. Got a little stage I built. And the screen actually hangs on French cleats that I made out of two by four. So I mean, I can pull that screen down literally in five seconds. Just get some one on each end, pull the bottom out, it's Velcroed in at the bottom, kind of hold it and lift up and that's it, it's off. I just pulled off the panel for the right side. See, it's an acoustic panel. This is a uh, DMD acoustic materials, what I used. Uh, I got samples from them and GOM or Guilford of Maine. Just really like the DMD material better. And it's kind of hard to see back there. There's a six foot sub behind this speaker. And this is the uh, HTM12 that you can get from DIY Sound Group. Really, really nice speaker. And, and here's the port for the subwoofer. So I mean, the port's down here and the 18 driver is right above the, the 12 inch HTM12. 
And there's another one right here in the center of the screen, behind the screen, because it is an acoustic screen. And of course, another one right there. So I'm sure most of you have already seen episode one, so you know I'm a really big stickler about the mains being properly positioned. I used to have my mains behind the screen, so I made these mistakes too. Not sure how I missed it, but anyway, mains are behind the screen in a baffle wall, QSC 2150s. And the thing was, I would sit in this first row and they would be closer to the proper angle. But I didn't like sitting in the first row. It was, it's too, the, the viewing angle is like 53 degrees. I didn't like it. I liked it back here. When I would sit back here, you know, the image would just collapse. It didn't sound good. And it was all because the angle was off. So I had to, you know, sell those speakers. And after that, I had the JBL 3677s. Had to sell those so I could find something to flank the screen. And that's when I got the HTM 12s and actually built the enclosures with the slant on the back so I could get some toe in. They barely fit, but they fit and they work. So now I've got that good sound I need back at my seats. In the ceiling, we've got some UV or black lights hidden in the crown molding, charges up the Starfield paint. I don't really use this while I'm watching movies. It's kind of distracting, makes everything glow. I think if I was gonna do it again, I'd probably do fiber optics. You know, that would be something you can actually use while you're watching a movie and it wouldn't be distracting. And it's, this doesn't really pop unless all the lights are out and it's really dark. Like a dark scene, you can see them. Like once they're charged up, like if I turn them off right now, you know, it's, you don't really see them right now. But, if, but now if, the, if all the lights are out, you know, they're really pop, it looks cool. All right, for the projector up here, we have a Sony 55ES. And it's a 1080p, you know, but I'm kind of, I don't like to just swap stuff as long as it's still working. And it's an awesome projector. It runs super, super quiet. Before I got that, I tried uh, Epson 5030. It was a projector Epson had at the time. And it was just so freaking loud in high mode. There was just no way I was going to leave that in here. It did fine as long as it wasn't in high mode. But unfortunately for that size screen, it needed high mode. And that Sony 55, it just, it's super bright, super quiet. It's so quiet. Even in high mode, it's quieter than the Epson was on low. Much, much quieter. And for the projector, I actually have an outlet up in the attic, and that's where I plug in the uh, projector. It's on uh, the same circuit as all the lights. You know, the lights don't draw much at all, and the projector doesn't draw much at all. So it's separated from all the audio. So, you know, just to make sure there's no flicker when the bass hits really hard. or You know, just that way I would never have to worry about anything like that. It's on a different break or a different run than the uh, rest of the gear. And the surrounds are actually Volt 10s. Like I said, from my... Uh, Previous videos, you probably know I wouldn't go with bolts again. Also got bolts in the ceiling. Got some little star paint on them so they kind of blend in. And there's a shot of the Dayton BST-1s. You basically hook them up like subs. And you can wire them in series, parallel, however you have to do it to get the right ohm load at your amp. And like I said, they have way more output than I want. I've got them turned down quite a bit. I just kind of dial them in until they add impact without feeling goofy so i'm not really you know i don't want a goofy sensation or i don't want it to be not realistic i want it to be realistic so i've just got them just enough to add a little impact at low volumes i almost forgot about the remote i've got a harmony elite as you can see the background is actually the movie room and you know you just Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to watch, you just press it. And I mean, I can change my air conditioner, temperature, turn the fan on, whatever with that one. I've actually got a Harmony Ultimate uh, on my shelf in there. I kind of like the Ultimate better just because I like the way the display is set up. But I've used both. They're both great remotes. They get the job done without breaking the bank. And price-wise, believe it or not, this room wasn't that expensive. If you take it from, you know, I started with sheetrock. Here's a photo of it. It's what it looked like, you know, before I actually took over. I mean, I took it from that to this for under $2,000. And that includes the screen, all the acoustics, all of the panels, all the paint. I mean, everything you visually see. doesn't include the speakers, of course, or the seats or the carpet, but everything else, you know, uh, 
So in other words, if you took had a bedroom or something like that, and you could you could do this pretty reasonable if you you know knew what you were doing and there's some little tricks of the trade. All right, and that's pretty much it. We're back to you know the entry room and as you see that ceiling slopes right here. And when I'm doing my little videos, I have hit my head on that ceiling so many freaking times. But you think I would learn by now after like the tenth time. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. So uh, I guess now I have a video I can watch after we sell this house because we do have a, a contingent offer on it right now. So there's going to be a time soon where I'm without this and I can look back at this video and mourn. So I guess I will see you guys next time.